Hello and a very warm welcome to Late Edition. I am Munman Bhattacharya. The government has decided to commemorate the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel on the 31st of October as Rashtriya Ekta Divas or National Unity Day every year. The day will be marked by administration of a pledge to government employees as well as school and college students to maintain the unity and integrity of the country. Tonight, in the run-up to his birth anniversary, we will focus on his contribution to nation building as a freedom fighter, as the first Home Minister of India, as an administrator and a visionary. To talk about the legacy of Sardar Vallabhai Patel and his contribution to nation building, we are joined by Professor Salil Mishra. He is a historian with Ambedkar University and Prafulla Ketkar, senior journalist. I welcome you both to Late Edition. I will begin with you, Mr. Ketkar. Did Sardar Patel show sterling leadership in the many roles that he played as a freedom fighter, as an administrator, as India's first home minister, as an economic thinker and as a diplomat? Absolutely. I would call him uh, an architect of unified India. And uh, it is uh, absolutely right in uh, calling his birth anniversary as the National Unity Day. Because it was a, really a challenging task after on, on the verge of partition, keeping all the uh, princely states intact, and the kind of administrative, diplomatic skills he uh, displayed to keep India intact. So I think it is a befitting, uh, you know, uh, commemoration of, uh, 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 you know, uh, in, in that sense he was, he, is, he, is, he should be considered as architect of unified India. Absolutely. That is a contribution that stands out Absolute. among Absolute. all the contributions that he made to nation building. But let's first uh, talk about his role as a freedom fighter. Uh, Professor Salan Mishra, how do you see his contribution in those days uh, when he was working under the guidance of Mahatma Gandhi? Because Mr. Arun Shetli, a couple of days ago, had said during the memorial lecture on Sardar Patel that he was a first-rank freedom fighter, though he wasn't as glamorized and other, as others were. Those were the words that he used. So how do you see his contribution as a freedom fighter? Oh, absolutely, no doubt. In the decades of... Patel started his career as a peasant leader in Bardoli, and he got his title the Sardar of Bardoli by the women peasants of Bardoli. Uh -huh. That's really an absolutely glorious saga. That's how he really makes his great entry into uh, politics of uh -huh. protest. In the 30s and 40s, he's of ab absolutely at the helm of affairs along with Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, Rajendra Prasad, Rajagopal Achari, and many others. He is one of them. As an important leader of Congress, his important contribution is, and I think of others also, they realize that national movement is more of a platform. There are very big leaders and there are differences. There are bound to be differences when there are tall people like this. Important thing is how to maintain your differences but not allow them to reach a point where they reach a point of break and there is a split in the movement. So all of them, Nehru, Patel, they took great care to ensure the difference is notwithstanding, they work together and there is no point of break or a split. Mm -hmm. That they took great care, he took great care to ensure that there was no break or split. And otherwise he played a great role in radicalizing the movement, in bringing various sections of the population into movement and in keeping the anti-imperialist edge to the forefront. There was to be no dilution in that. And there, I think, really, Patel stands out. He was mm -hmm. a great organization man. Absolutely. Perhaps one man, more than anyone else, who had an absolutely tight iron grip over the organization, it was Sardar Patel. So he would make sure that there is perfect unity. He would make sure that if there are voices of dissent mm -hmm. from some provincial Congress units, mm -hmm. I think there were some such cases from Bengal and elsewhere, he saw to it that organizational unity, organizational control, organization coherence mm -hmm. is maintained. Absolutely. And he was a strong that. organization Absolutely. man and had an iron will. But uh, Mr. Ketkar, how did he and Mahatma Gandhi and other uh, Congress leaders work together as a team? See, he, uh, his approach was always uh, nation first. But while doing that, he beautifully balanced his individual preferences and uh, the collective interest. Uh, 
in many sense we see that he has this uh, he had this ability to uh, synthesize the things many people consider him as a conservative leader but uh, he basically started as a peasant leader so uh, he 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 stood for land reforms mm -hmm. very much uh, uh, and uh, at the same time he was very much modern in his administrative approach very much. Uh, he w always wanted uh, the uh, swadeshi movement to grow and local entrepreneurship to stand on their own absolutely so he was basically a very synthesizing factor because there were ideological influences within Congress. Congress itself was a platform that time. Mm -hmm. There was a, a empty imperialism was the core ideology. And while doing that, what he did basically, he perfectly displayed that while keeping your principles and individual opinions intact, mm -hmm. you can work uh, as, a as, as a team member. You can lead the team. So from Gujarat to uh, Delhi, as a, uh, in Delhi as a home minister, he uh, carved out his own role as a as a negotiator, as a synthesizer, and I think that was a, that was a great need at that particular moment mm -hmm. because because the see uh, state building was one exercise. Mm -hmm. But there was another exercise that was more important at that juncture, and that was nation building. Mm -hmm. uh, in, well, institution building wise, to some extent, you know, uh, Nehru was one factor, mm -hmm. Dr. Babasar Ambedkar was one factor, at the, uh, Gandhi, of course, was, you know, unifying factor. But I think as far as the whole nation building process, the momentum, what, what, what can be the role for, um, you know, the, the dissenting voices? not only within the Congress, even outside the Congress. Mm -hmm. And he took a very stern stand that, yes, you have, as a democracy, you have every right to express your opinion. You can uh, express that opinion through media, through parliamentary discussions. Mm -hmm. But if you are talking about separatism, no way. So th that was his way of dealing with the things. And whenever necessary, he used uh, carrot and stick policy. He used his diplomatic skills. Mm -hmm. He interacted with international actors. And I think he played a uh, very important role in, in synthesizing various interests Absolutely. during so the Absolutely. So there were many struggle. aspects of his personality. Absolutely. He was Absolutely. a diplomat, a power <coughs> excellence, and not just that. He was a team a member, <coughs> like you're saying. <coughs> now, uh, Professor Mishra, how do you see his economic philosophy? Um, Mr. Ketka referred to how he believed in the Swadeshi movement. He believed in self-sufficiency as far as indigenous production is concerned, as far as food is concerned. He believed in the rights of laborers. And how relevant is it in contemporary times? Oh, very. I would say two things. There are two aspects to it. First, let us, let us agree, he was opposed to socialism socialism, class struggle, things of that kind, that he was not very much in favor of. And that, that brought him into difference with the left wingers within the Congress in the 1930s. But otherwise, he felt that there is no contradiction between cottage industries at a local level, cooperatives. Let us not forget that Amul as a great cooperative experiment. It was encouraged and promoted a great deal by Sardar Patel more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. TC Kurian is on record saying that. And third, of course, is modern capitalist development, industrial development based on modern science and technology. He did not think there is either or. Mm -hmm. So there should be some space for the local cottage village industries. There should be cooperatives cooperative movement he was greatly in support and at the same time there should be modern capitalist development based on modern science and technology so he in a way was in favor of pushing all the three at the same time mm -hmm. without seeing one as against the other he okay. did not see the three as opposed, opposed to, each, to other. each other but his great contribution really is in pushing the voluntary uh, the cooperative movement mm -hmm. amul the great one of mm -hmm. the greatest cooperative experiments in the world Let's not forget, in the 50s, let me just tell you, uh, many people from India would go to Europe and other countries to see how cooperatives work. In the 80s and 90s, it actually turned. Amul became such a huge success right. uh, that people from European countries, ex experts would come to India mm -hmm. to look at 
the reasons behind the success of the... And people still the, want to emulate the success of that cooperative. The Amul. And mm -hmm. I think the one major reason was that it was a cooperative movement, individual initiative, collectives, but backed up by the state, supported by the state, wherever they need. Okay. Right? And that really is the formula. Okay, so that was the economic philosophy of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. But uh, we've been saying it time and again that uh, his biggest contribution was integration of uh, the entire country into one united whole. And he got so many princely states on board that must have been a really really challenging task how did he go about it absolutely I think uh, before uh, uh, touching upon the unification of princely states I should add that he also uh, was the person who didn't find any uh, contradiction between the agricultural or agrarian and the industrial interest I think that thought of his is very much relevant today when we are saying you know as if industrial interest and agrarian interest are con kind of and even between employer and labor he uh, never thought that there was any contradiction he no, said they should all he, work together he, he for him it was the government uh, <coughs> and and uh, for that matter dr babasa bambedkar and sardar patel was on the same page on this that government laborers and industrialists are the three parties of the same development process so if there is any issue there is any you know matter of uh, dispute or discussion it should be through resolved through tripartite dialogue so that was the approach he you know pushed for mm -hmm. now coming to the unification of princely states we have to understand that uh, sardar patel uh, got s if i am not wrong around 72 days for this whole process 565 princely states were there and uh, barring three he got almost everybody on board mm -hmm. now another important aspect in this process was the treaty of accession right uh, was actually designed by the british government if i'm not wrong on 3rd june british parliament passed this Indian Independence Act and uh, by 14th, 15th August it has to be completed. Mm -hmm. Now in this process uh, there were many misconceptions uh, that were created at that point uh, which are still prevailing in some areas like Jammu Kashmir mm -hmm. that as if uh, you know there was an option of uh, independence for princely states mm -hmm. there was no such option and it was because of sardar patel there was only either or option mm -hmm. either bharat or pakistan mm -hmm. that was the option that was given and that's why he ensured that while signing the treaty of accession itself right princely states completely you know accept the overarching idea of either bharat or pakistan mm -hmm. So, while at the, at the beginning of the process itself, he ensured that they get, you know, representation even in the constitution making process. Mm -hmm. Because before that, the um, elections for constituent assembly was already uh, had taken place in mm -hmm. 1946. Mm -hmm. So, he ensured that some kind of representation, uh, you know, princely states to also get some representation. And I think this whole idea of mainstreaming princely states in the democratic process with a clear cut option given to them mm -hmm. i think it was a fabulous idea at that time because otherwise uh, given choice to the uh, british imperialists and the manipulators bet in between uh, it would India have been would very have difficult, had many very difficult mm -hmm. to keep all <laughs> these factors especially when we were almost on the verge of partition so we completely owe him our present geography and the integration of India as Absolute. a united whole. Unity and integrity of Absolutely. India. Absolutely. So uh, now, uh, Professor Mishra, Travancore, Hyderabad, Bhopal, Junagar, these were some big complexities before Sardar Vallabhai Patel. How did he negotiate through them? Uh, Munmun, there is a story. I, I think it's probably true, but it may not be true. It's there in Mountbatten's record mm -hmm. that Mountbatten contacted Patel and said that I would like you to, in the interim government, I would like you to take up the responsibility of the princely states. And Patel said, I'll take it up, but I want 565 apples in my basket. <laughs> and Mountbatten said, what about 560? 
there was some doubt about Jodhpur, Bhopal, Junagar, Travancore, mm -hmm. and probably one more, mm -hmm. maybe Hyderabad. Maybe Hyderabad. Right? Yeah. Uh, so Patel said, "We'll see about that. I'll live with it." But Patel was reasonably sure that, uh, given the situation, these tiny states will not be able to stand up, and mm -hmm. they would eventually join in. Patel, of course, along with VP Menon, went whole hog and uh, saw to it. He used concession, he used coercion, he used threat, he used whatever had to be used, but he saw to it that all the princely states eventually joined and it was a bloodless revolution. It Absolutely. was a revolution. Not a drop of blood I think was this shed. was a part of the consensus of the national movement. This was a part of the priority of the national movement. Since 1938, uh, you know, once the fo with the formation of the All India States People's Organization, the idea was that national movement would now actively interfere into the princely states. Till then, national movement had stayed away. Mm -hmm. So, idea was that national movement would now interfere so as eventually to make them all a part of India, which is what they were before the British took over. Mm -hmm. So, it is actually correcting a historical wrong because all these princely states were a part of India, Rajputana, Rajasthan and others. Mm -hmm. And so, I think once the time came, Patel was very swift. The thing, it would have happened, no doubt. If there was someone else doing it, it would still have happened. Mm -hmm. But the thing about Patel was that he was absolutely swift. He swung into action. He tried... Time was of the essence, like Mr. Ketkar was saying. He tried whatever had to be tried and uh, accept the three contentious ones, Jammu, Kashmir, Hyderabad and Junagadh, all the others were pretty much along. And Hyderabad it, also agreed to yeah, be part and of the eventually, Union. Uh, eventually. But, uh, and Mountbatten also helped in this. You see, once, once Mountbatten had done all that had to be done, partition, etc., then it has to be said that he also helped in the process of integrating these states to India. I think Bhopal, Raja of Bhopal was entertaining some doubts and then Mountbatten told him that, look, mm -hmm. you don't stand a chance. India is too big a country. You can't be on your own. It's in your interests to integrate, to become a part of India. Mm -hmm. But it was a great feat. It was a revolution and almost a bloodless revolution. Absolutely. Would you say that uh due credit has not been given to Sardar Vallabhai Patel over the past uh, several years because it's in the 1970s that it was realized that something as small as this, that there was no official biography of uh, Patel. So has due credit not been given to him, due recognition not been given to his contribution to nation building and is that changing now? I think it it is changing now. It has already changed drastically in uh, last uh, more than a year, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, somehow Indian political narrative uh, has been caught into uh, Nehru Gandhi uh, uh, family. Many times it may not be intentional, but uh, uh, political process is such that there has been overwhelming influence of one and, and somehow Indian political history has been told that way. Uh, Patel, now for, I, I'll just give you one example. In the constitution making process, uh, we uh, speak about uh, many committees. We forget that there were three most important committees. A committee on fundamental rights, a committee on minority affairs, and a committee on state constitutions. Mm -hmm. All these three committees were headed by Patel. Many of us, you know, we don't know this. Absolutely. Now, these were the three factors which have decided the course of our constitution and Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar has also recognized this. Now, uh, uh, there has been a narrative about pa uh, uh, Sardar Patel as being either conservative or majoritarian and th th there was a subtle messaging. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of political symbols you want to create? That is also part of the uh, political dispensations. And in the post-independent period, Indian government, Indian political, we also have to keep this in mind that after independence, uh, Patel got uh, how many? All, uh, just four years? Of his 50, life. Yes. three years. Two and a so, half years. Th so it, it was a very less period to be there in the mm, post-independent political <laughs> psyche. He didn't get that kind of period while Nehru was there up to almost 1964. But as far as the thinking is concerned, the, the kind of contribution he made in that short span is concerned, it has to be recognized 
uh, his his due as architect of unified and integral india has to be he his his ability to uh, you know uh, synthesize the uh, traditional values and culture of india with the modern ideas and institutions that has to be recognized mm -hmm. and uh, if that is not percolated uh, to the young uh, minds uh, i think we will miss somewhere on that ability the iron man on the one hand the synthesizing ability on the other hand this kind of leadership uh, i think is uh, is a need of the time and if if that legacy is cherished mm -hmm. and the best way to uh, cherish that legacy is to you know uh, take it to the next generation mm -hmm. so in that sense i believe that uh, by and large yes we we uh, neglected his uh, overarching uh, contribution but it is changing uh, to a large extent mm -hmm. now and do you think uh, that the decision to uh, commemorate his birth anniversary as Rashtriya Ekta Divas on National Unity Day or the step uh, that has been taken by the Centre and Gujarat government earlier to have the world's tallest statue of Sardar Patel emerging from the waters of the Narmada part of uh, a messaging now which is being done to take his contribution to the younger generation? Well, it is very important to remember our icons, icons of the national movement. That is how I would like to remember Sardar Patel. There are a whole range of ways in which we need to remember him, appropriate his legacy, tell the generation about his contribution and so on. Uh, statue is absolutely welcome, but more than the statue, what I would personally like is more and more researches need to happen on him, his speeches, writings, selected works, collected works, biographies, his own. All that needs to be brought into the mainstream and all that needs to be disseminated. And for me, it's not a question of Nehru versus Patel. Sometimes we are all being unfair to both Patel and Nehru by positing the ma thing in this manner. We need, we need to appropriate legacies. And it is true that not enough has been done on Patel. That needs to be set right. That needs to be corrected. We need to do more, more work. We need to publish more selected works, writings, and make it available to general people more, through more researches. I mean, we need to have professional researches so that these eventually percolate down through media to common people so that people develop a sense of the kind of contribution Sardar Patel made both as a leader of the national movement and in a very short time, it's 1947 to 50, but nonetheless an extremely important contribution to the unity and integrity of the country. Okay. Now as the last word, if I would want you to cherry pick among the several contributions that he have made uh, to nation building, what would you say stands out the most? Uh, before answering your question, you know, I will just add an anecdote. Last year on the same day, 31st October, I was there in Arunachal. And a group of people came to me and they were coming up from somewhere and they said, we are really happy. I said, why? So they said, you know, uh, from Arunachal, we have contributed iron to uh, the Gujarat uh, statue uh, of Sardar Patel. And they were happy that, you know, this is the person who, you know, uh, virtually kept India unified and brought all uh, entities together, the British India and the princely states. So uh, I think uh, they, they, they consider it as their tribute to Sardar Patel. That I think explains everything, that his, his uh, ability as a strong administrator, but at the same time uh, a, a kind of very sharp uh, nationalist negotiator mm -hmm. who kept India as a nation intact. He set the process of India's uh, new nation building in the right direction and that is his biggest contribution I believe. Mm -hmm. And there is an emotional appeal here isn't it uh, uh, Mr. Ketkar which I think you're trying to highlight that if you ask uh, for uh, people uh, to really contribute iron for the mm -hmm. iron uh, statue mm -hmm. of India that is an innovative out of the box idea and that will help people recognize uh, his uh, contribution to unity and Absolutely, integrity. Because he is the one who brought all these parts together now from all these parts uh, 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 a piece of iron is being contributed for his statue. So I think very it is symbolic, very innovative is. and symbolic uh, in, in many sense. And what would you say is his biggest contribution? Because everyone uh, recognizes the fact that he you know, ensured that the Indian Union is one as a whole. He got so many uh, princely states on board. But besides that, if I would want to ask uh, Q about what you think besides that is the biggest contribution, what would you say? Two. 
as a leader of the national movement, immense contribution and sacrifice to the anti-imperialist nationalist struggle till 1947. After 1947, integrity, integration of the country, maintaining the unity of the country. These two, I would say, are, in my, according to me, are two of the most important contributions that were made uh, by Sardar Patel, for which he needs to be remembered. Mm -hmm. But would you agree with the point that he had made earlier, that there is a need for greater research on him, because still not many people know about his contribution? Absolutely. Now, uh, you know, whenever a discussion takes place around, say, Jammu, uh, on, on Jammu and Kashmir, uh, people obviously ask questions, you know, uh, if, if all other princely states were dealt by uh, Sardar Patel, why, why, why was not JNK? And we need to find, uh, you know, correct answers to it. Because it was the same accession treaty uh, that was signed by other princely states that was signed by Raja Hari Singh on 26th October 1947. So what, what was the, you know, uh, uh, differentiating point? Why, why Sardar Patel was, you know, a kind of kept away from this uh, process? Was there any historical decision? Uh, was there any political understanding between him and the other leaders of uh, Congress party? So we need to. There are many aspects. In fact, he has written many letters. I think uh, they also uh, should be researched very carefully. The letters written to um, uh, uh, Lord Mountbatten, the letters written to uh, Mr. Nehru, uh, Gandhi, his family members, and he has talked about, if, if we have to understand his thinking, mm -hmm. I think his letters can be very important source to understand his thought. When, when we say that, uh, I am using the word, he was not looking at the things as merely this versus that. He was not talking about the contradictions. He was talking about the actually uh, consensus. He was talking about the cooperation. He was talking about bringing the extremely opposite factors together and working together. Mm -hmm. So that was his idea. What was the basis for that idea? How we can you know stretch those ideas further and make them relevant today? In that sense, we I think we should consider uh, research on Sardar Patel should be supported and encouraged. Absolutely. So research on Sardar Patel should be encouraged and supported is a point on which both of you agree. On that note, I thank you, Professor Salil Mishra and uh, Prof. Laketkar for joining us on Late Edition. So uh, the government has decided to commemorate his birth anniversary, which falls on the 31st of October as National Unity Day or Ashtriya Ekta Divas. It is one of the many befitting tributes which the government is likely to give to him for the legendary contribution that he has made to India's nation building in different roles as a freedom fighter, as a diplomat, as an administrator, as India's first home minister and as an integrator of so many princely states into one Indian Union. The credit that for today's geography is something that goes to Sardar Vallabhai Patel. With that, we conclude this edition of Late Edition. Thanks for watching.